Hello there everybody, how's it going and how have you been? I am Euclidean Squid, and we're back here in Duel Links. The Battle City Showdown Duels Chronicles event is still going on. There have been some new features enabled for it. I may go over those at the end of the video if I happen to remember to. But the main focus of today's video is going to be the new event, Elegant Mai. Now, Elegant Mai herself is not anything too particularly special. She's basically just a harder version of Mai Valentine. Uh, she does have some unique cards that can drop, which is reason enough to duel her if you want them. They are pretty good. But she is what I like to call a roaming duelist event. And as the name implies, a the event duelist in a roaming duelist event isn't going to be available all the time. Now, basically the cycle works. She will spawn in Duel World, you duel her, win or lose, she disappears for a while until the game decides to respawn her. That's the basic cycle. In recent months they have reworked these kinds of events so that as you participate in other duels, whatever invisible respawn timer in the game that controls when she sh shows up again is supposed to go down faster. Or in other words, dueling other duelists makes her reappear sooner. But anecdotally, there have been times where I have beaten two NPC duelists and she's shown up immediately. There have been times where I've beaten 12 NPC duelists and she's still nowhere to be seen. So, as a result, these Roman Duelist events are by far my least favorite kind of event in Duel Links, just because it's it's just a pain in the butt to try and farm them. Because not only are you fighting the RNG of the loot drops, because Ellie and Mai can still give you stuff like gate keys and gold, as well as the actual loot cards that you want, you also, like, you just can't duel her regularly. So if you get a bad hand and your farming attempt is messed up, you may have to wait half an hour, 45 minutes to try again. So, you know, there's that. Uh, I have found a deck meant to regularly beat level 40 Elegant Mai online. I have reworked it so it is slightly cheaper, but unfortunately a lot of the rare cards are kind of essential for the strategy of the deck. So, if you don't have some of them, good luck trying to find some fixes, but I, I don't really have that many ideas. Anyway, the idea of this deck is to use the Paradox Brothers skill Labyrinth Builder, which basically special summons a labyrinth while on your side of the field in defense mode. And this is very important because none of her monsters are, are strong enough to attack through Labyrinth Wall. Now that said, Elegant Mai does have a bunch of spell and traps that could return Labyrinth Wall to your hand, so in that respect, um, the idea here is to basically just keep setting up defenses that she can't get through and either wear down her ability to bounce your monsters out of play or through some manner or another just kind of dodge it until the end of the game. Now the general strategy with the deck after summoning Labyrinth Wall is to use cards like Dark Mimic level 3, Dark Mimic level 1, and Doomdog Ochthros to pull more cards out of your deck. Specifically, the two Dark Mimics will just let you draw cards, whereas Octhros will let you specifically search for these two Dark Necrofears. Now, you may be able to get away with just one Necrofear, which you will get as a starter card in Yami Bakura's deck when you unlock him, and he is available at the gate, so you don't have to wait for an event to try and get him. But having two does make it a little bit easier, just in case, uh, you know, just, just in case of emergencies. Now, again, the idea being you special summon the Necrofears in defense mode. Their defense is so high that Mai can't attack past them, and would basically have to burn her ability to send your monsters back to try and get around them. Now, that's sort of the, the gimmick to the deck. The, you know, the farming combo, as it would be, is the usual Secret Pass to the Treasures, Gravekeeper's Vassal, Union Attack setup. But it does have a few extra cards in as well. Particularly of note is Shield and Sword. This card is a... I believe it's a drop from beating Joey Wheeler. But this card is essential because it switches the original attack and defense of all face-up monsters on the field. And is pretty much necessary if you want to power Vassal up to the point where he can do over 10,000 points of damage. Specifically the idea being on the last turn of the game, 
You switch Labyrinth Wall and your Dark Necrofear on the field into Attack Mode. You activate Shield and Sword. The Labyrinth Wall goes up to 3,000 attack points. The Necrofear goes to 2,800 attack points. So then, when you use your two Union attacks on Vassal, it gains over 5,000 attack from each. Ergo, you do over 10,000. Now, additionally, you may be able to get around not having this card, but having Giant Truenade or as it's called for some reason, Hey Trunade in your deck is pretty good, because there have been instances instances where Elegant Mai has saved one of her like monster returning cards until the end of the game. I don't know exactly what prompts her AI to do it. It almost seems like if it would just waste the effect, quote-unquote, she won't do it, but... Um, the card in particular is called Spiritual Wind Art. It's a trap card, and it basically uh, she tributes one of her wind monsters, and she sends one of your monsters to the bottom of your deck. Now, this is particularly annoying because if she does save it until the end of the game, she will use it against Vassal when you try to attack her with it. So, having this card, having Trunade, you get to return the set spells and traps on the field to the hand, so you basically get to neutralize that trap before she has a chance to use it. Now, in my experimentation with this deck, I have run into another problem, which is that when you try to use Trunade, she will use another trap called Mirror Wall. Now, Mirror Wall itself is a continuous trap, and it basically says whenever your opponent's monsters try to attack, their attack power is halved. Now, this is where kind of an optional thing comes into play. This will react to Vassal trying to attack her directly, so it, if she has Mirror Wall active, you really can't do over 10,000 points of damage. You will still get points, because Vassal will still likely have over 5,000 attack points, and there is still a dual assessment reward for doing over 5,000 points of damage. But this is why I've added the spell card Remove Trap into this deck, because just in case Mai decides to activate Mirror Wall when I use Trunade, I can then use Remove Trap to destroy Mirror Wall, and still get the over 10,000 damage effect. Now, the card that I replaced from this deck is called Sphere Karibo, and the idea with Sphere Karibo is uh, he's a card you keep in your hand if your opponent tries to declare an attack, you can toss him into the graveyard to negate the attack, and I think put the monster in defense mode. I don't really know, I don't use Sphere Karibo too much, but I mainly swapped him out because he is an ultra rare, and he doesn't, he doesn't really add too much to the deck, in my opinion. Um, I seem to be pretty good at either getting lucky or finding ways to encourage Elegant Mai to not attack regularly, so I don't really need Sphere Karibo. <clears throat> but anyway, in case she does attack, that's what these two trap cards are for, Curse of Anubis and Windstorm of Takria. If she ever manages to clear your field completely of monsters and tries to go for your life points, you can use one of these two traps as an, emerg as an emergency button, to stop all of her monsters in her tracks for that one turn. And then hopefully you can either get a Necrofear back on the field or somehow resummon your Labyrinth Wall. I don't know exactly how, but you know, that's they're the two big emergency buttons to try and save your life points as best you can. Now, that's kind of enough prattling. I at least wanted to show off the deck here because if something bad happens in this recording, I don't know when I can next record this video, just because, like I said, she respawns completely randomly. And in fact, I've been sitting here waiting for about half an hour trying to get her to show up again, and she only just now showed up. <clears throat> a bitter. Uh, before we go into the duel, I did want to show off, if you are trying to farm Elegant Mai, keep your eye out for this, Amazonist Princess. This is a very good card if you're trying to build an Amazonist deck. Uh, long story short, when you normal summon it, she gets to seek out an Amazonas spell or trap card from your deck for you. And whenever it tries to attack, you can send a card from your hand or field to the graveyard and special summon another Amazonas monster from your deck. So all around, very good for seeking out your spells and your monsters. Good card for any Amazonas deck you're trying to make. The other new loot drop card that you can give is this one, Spicy Spy. Um, when you normal summon it, you get to look at a random card in your opponent's extra deck. If it has 2,000 or more attack points, this card gains 1,000 attack. If that monster has less than 2,000 attack points, you gain life points equal to the monster's attack. 
So I don't know exactly what happens if your opponent doesn't have an extra deck and you play this card, but you know maybe you could do some fun stuff with it. Uh, but I don't have a single copy of either, so. Yeah, I'm a little bit frustrated with her right now, but let's see if we can change that with this duel. Really hoping the recording goes well. Um, if I don't see... I'm trying to... If I seem a little bit scatterbrained, I'm sorry, but I'm trying to juggle like three different things in my head to, to all try and remember at once for this duel. Um, just, again, because if I mess this up, or if the recording messes up, I don't know when she's going to show up again. Basically, use your skill. I'm going to send Remove Trap and Necrofear back into my deck, just because I don't need Remove Trap until the end of the game, and Necrofear is something I can search out with Doomdog Octhros, which I'm actually going to set so that I can pull Necrofear again. Um, I believe you can get Doomdog from the card trader, and like I mentioned, you get a Necrofear for just unlocking Yami Pakora, but Dark Necrofear is also a dual reward from beating him. So, if you are trying to get two, or if you're lucky enough to have gotten two, good for you. Um, I would recommend using the Doomdogs over the Dark Mimics, just because the... The Doom Dogs can only find your Dark Necrofears, whereas the um, basically what I'm trying to say is, if you use a Dark Mimic and you draw a Dark Necrofear, that's a Doom Dog that you then can't later use to thin out your deck. And that is actually something that you want to try and actively do: is draw as many cards out of your deck as you can. Specifically because there is one spell card that Mai has. I don't know if we'll see it or not, but it's called Monster Gate. And it does have the potential to mill a lot of cards out of her deck. To the point where she may get like five or six cards ahead of you. So that makes it a lot more difficult to gather all the cards you need to pull off the farming combo for the win. So I'm just going to keep going. And... Here we are running into one of the main problems of this particular version of the deck, is this Harpy Lady 2. She negates the effects of all flip effect monsters that she attacks, and I've noticed that the AI has a very annoying habit of using it to attack everything face down, which, I mean, I guess it makes sense, but it, as a result, it makes all the Dark Mimic level 1s in your deck completely worthless. So if you don't happen to have some Dark Mimic, dark mimic level 1s, they only make you draw one card whenever they're face up, so maybe you could get away with swapping them out for something like Jar of Greed. But... And there's the monster gate. But basically, whenever you see that Harpy Lady 2, your draw power is going to go down a little bit. And, oh, she actually got rid of her Spiritual Wind Art, and there goes a lot of the cards in her deck. As I, as I mentioned, that was three... She's now suddenly three cards ahead of me, in terms of drawing. So I need to kind of hurry things up a little bit to try and catch up. Alright. I'm going to go ahead and special summon a Necrofear in defense mode. Um, I don't have to worry about her trap card, Spiritual Wound Art, anymore, just because I saw her discard it. But she does have another card in her deck called uh, Quill Pen of Gildos or something like that. And that's another card that can send a monster, that can, you know, just bounce a monster off of your field. So, definitely want to make sure you have both defenders as soon as you can. Uh, one thing I have noticed is when you have your two defenders in play, she seems very unlikely to use either card. So, I don't know particularly why, maybe because the AI sees it as... If I use this card, I don't really gain anything because I still can't attack them. Maybe? I, I honestly don't know. Uh, and of course, your results may vary. Hurry, I may decide to behave completely differently when you try to do a lot So, I'm just I'm showing you the best I can for this very difficult event to list. Uh, I am almost... 
caught up to her. I have the Vassal, the two Union Attacks, the True Nade. I need Shield and Sword and Secret Pass. Now, uh, one thing you definitely do not want to do is Special Summon both Dark Necrofears when you already have Labyrinth Wall because then your field will get clogged and you won't have any way to play Gravekeeper's Vassal at the end of the game. So, this Dark Necrofear is kind of just sitting in my hand doing nothing, but the main purpose of having two is so that you are more likely to either draw them, or you can make more use out of the Doom Dogs effect to pull cards out of your deck. Alright, there's Shield and Sword, so it looks like um, Secret Pass is the final card in my deck. And I'm going to go ahead and toss this other Dark Necrofear, just so you guys hand size limit. Or AI will go ahead and destroy the Doom Dog, which is fine. Don't need to activate either of my traps. All right, and do we get a successful farm off? I use the True Nade. She activates Mirror Wall to try and save it. And I can use Remove Trap to destroy Mirror Wall so that I do the full 10,000. Change these two to attack position. Use shield and sword. This is something very important. You will want to make sure that you put wall and necrofear in attack mode because union attack will only give vassal the power of your other attack position monsters. So if you just use shield and sword and leave them in defense mode, vassal's not going to get any stronger. And use the typical secret pass double union. And I think. I think we've done it. I think we got a successful farm off by some miracle. She suddenly has some card that wasn't in the deck list I found online. Nope, that worked. Whew. Alright. Not bad at all. And so I have to send a little scatterbrain, but. Looks like it came out okay. And no special cards. Another reason why I don't like the Roaming Duelists. She still she does give you Dice Fragments at least. And as you can see up here it now says Keep Dueling and My will appear. So let's just go ahead. I'm just a little curious, honestly. Um, that will change to like My is coming closer or something like that. When she's nearly respawned. And then when Elegant Mai actually does show up again in the dual world, there will be a sort of pop-up notification that says Elegant Mai has appeared. So the game is at least very upfront about when she is available. It's just actually making her show up again that can be a little bit of a pain in the butt. So I'm just curious to see if this duel in particular will make anything change. Um, yeah, that's, that's the basis of that deck that I found to try and beat Elegant Mai. Again, that's if you're trying to go for a full 8,000 points every time you duel her. You certainly don't have to. If you have a strong enough deck, you could probably just fight her in a more regular duel and get anywhere from like 2 to 4 duel rewards. Uh, especially because we do have an event going on right now that gives you an extra 1,000 points at the end of the duel. So that is a guaranteed bonus prize no matter what. And I think... No, the bonus duel reward will go away about two days before Elegant Mai does. So you will want to try and beat her as much as you can. Um, meh, not really sure much what else to say about Elegant Mai, so let's just... So, if that's all you were here for, I hope that helps. Uh, it's kind of an overview of both that kind of duel in particular, and her deck, some of the threats, and the deck to beat it. So now, let's go ahead and show off the new stuff in the Duel Chronicles. So the first thing is once you've beaten the map all the way through once, <laughs> these kinds of spaces will appear. When you land on these, they will take you to a bonus level called the Treasure Room, where every single space on the board is either a stack of Millennium Coins or a dice or a support item. And at the end of the track, you get to duel against Mokuba. If you lose, you still get pushed back a space. But when you win, he gives you many, many, many more Millennium Coins than the regular Duels Chronicle Duelists. Specifically, if you beat him at level 20, he will give you 150, compared to these guys' 75. 
And if you beat Mokuba at level 40, he gives you a whopping 250 Millennium Coins. Which, if you remember from the lottery, that's almost enough to get a whole 10 prizes out of it, just from that one duel. Uh, his level 40 deck is a little bit difficult, but as I mentioned, if you lose, you don't get kicked out of the treasure room, you just get pushed back a space. Uh, and even better, when you're in the treasure room, it only costs you one dice fragment to roll instead of seven. So it's very cheap to keep redueling him if you do lose, and when you do win, like I said, you get 250 coins. Now the other thing that has been enabled, and in fact has only been around for only for just a few hours since I've been, as of when I recorded this episode, is you can now use these Divine Offering items. Specifically, you can use 10 of them and you get to immediately challenge a special level 50 version of Yami Yugi. I don't know about the, the particulars about his deck because the one time I've done it so far he didn't really do anything, so I'm guessing he probably had a kind of bad starting hand maybe? like. Literally, all he did was summon Beta the Magnet Warrior, and then set a Gazelle in defense mode, and those were the only two cards he played before he managed to win, so maybe he got a bad hand, I don't know. But the main reason you want to do that is when you beat Yami Yugi at level 50, you get special bonus rewards. Specifically, the first time you beat him, you get a new skill for Yami Yugi called Card of Sanctity, which, long story short, if you summon Sly for the Sky Dragon, at the end of the turn, both players get to draw until they have six cards in their hand. So this is basically a skill to buff Slifer in that, with this skill active, whenever you summon him, he will pretty much always be at 6,000 attack at the end of your turn. Now, he may not be at 6,000 attack by the start of your next turn, depending on what your opponent may decide to do, because there are some cards in the game that can make, your, make you discard some cards. But that is besides the point, this is just kind of a way to try and buff Slifer and make him a little bit more usable. Kind of like how Yami Merrick's Power of the Tributed skill, which released during his event, is supposed to make Raw a little bit more usable. But, after you get the skill, you can continue to reduel the level 50 Yami Yugi. The next time you beat him, you'll get 50 gems, then 10,000 gold, then another 50 gems, then an Ultra Rare Jewel. But then, Every time you beat him after that, you will get 150 coins for the Duels Chronicles Lottery. So if you happen to have a lot of those Divine Offerings built up, like I do, and I'm using my mouse so you're hearing clicking, and I do apologize for that, but as you can see I've got 157 of the darn things built up, and I keep winning them when I beat the Chronicle Duelists. So if you have a lot of these Divine Offerings, they can be a good source of extra million coins if you really need to keep playing the card lottery a whole bunch. Uh, I think I only need like one or two more copies of a particular card from the lottery, and it really doesn't want to give it to me. So I may have to do this at some point. I don't, again, I don't know particularly how difficult level 50 Yami Yugi is, so you know what? The episode's still kind of short. Let's just go ahead and try it again. Why not? I don't really have a farming strategy. I don't know if I'll be able to come up with a farming strategy, uh, create a video, and upload it with any significant amount of time left in the event, so you guys may be on your own, but hey, in this case, Google's your best friend. Go ahead and use Restart to swap my aliens back into my deck. Uh, this is one of the auto duel decks I like to use. It's just particularly good all around. See what he does. So, like I said, last time all he did was summon Beta and use Gazelle. And he's being a lot more difficult this time. Okay, so he does have Dark Paladin. Uh, which, in case you don't know, whenever you try to use a spell card, he has a chance to discard a card and then negate your spell card's effect. Not to mention, Dark Paladin gains 500 attack for every dragon in both players' graveyards or on the field. But thankfully Dark Paladin doesn't get to stop traps, so I'm just going to take control of it with Brainwashing Beam. I'm going to use a cell Recombination Device. I'm going to dump a whole bunch of A counters on the Beta. I'm going to remove some of said A counters from Beta. Almost keep clicking on Dark Paladin by mistake. And... 
this is probably going to this is definitely going to be game so again I don't know if I just got lucky or if aliens are really good against this deck or what but he did something a little bit more this time <laughs> but uh, ideally if you have a fairly strong deck it shouldn't be too difficult uh, but hopefully you'll have a lot of those divine offering items lying around from playing in the Duels Chronicles event so you will have plenty of chances to duel him and I'm pretty sure that win or lose he will disappear after that duel so you will have to spend another 10 divine offerings to make him show up again and re-duel him so there's that and yeah that's pretty much all I wanted to cover in this video we looked at Elliot Mai and we looked at new stuff for Duels Chronicles I'm glad I didn't forget that so thank you all so much for watching I hope you all had a great time and I hope you all have a great day. I will see you all in the next episode. And farewell for now.